Okay, so here's a few short sessions playing against a beginner in chess and just working through some of the movements and concepts uh, to help them develop their game going forward. So this initial game here is um, their first game that I play against them and as you can see immediately the pawns have been pushed through to the center um, basically treating the pawns like the pawns are the kingpins of the game and it's usually the case when I do play beginners they believe the pawns if you can get the pawns further down the board then it's going to stand you in good stead so basically throughout this game here just throwing in a few hints and tips as to how to look to develop going forward not to say that I'm doing anything great so we'll take you through the game okay so we castled keeping it nice and safe so they come through with the knight and we develop our knight and like we say they like to push forward with the pawns but the pawn isn't protected so we can actually take the pawn off the board and targeting their knight so still developing and taking the opportunity to take the knight off the board we could have waited but may as well take it off now that knight has no place in the board and he can't go and castle on the king side because now the rook has moved so simple development and just pushing through now to the center just opening up the white square bishop and again pawn pushing not really having the confidence to work with the minor pieces or the major pieces they understand what to do with the pieces so we now look to attack the knight also attacking the pawn but obviously really just attacking the knight and the pawn was supporting the knight so we can freely take the knight put pressure onto the queen so again these are the cases where pawns are protecting pieces but as a beginner more times out of ten and um, that is not really seen and they treat the pawns like they are the kingpins of the game again another pawn move forsaking the queen so we can capture the queen fairly simple straightforward all the while i'm trying to just keep focused on my own movements just because you're whipping pieces off the board doesn't mean that you know you, you have to lose your own basis you know your own strategies and your own concepts So the opponent's still playing on and and that's a key thing that's what we we talked about basically just carrying on just to see how they develop see how i work my pieces i can freely move my knight because he's not actually taking the knight with the king so these t these tiny things do happen and like i said it's a ranked beginner that we're playing against and we're looking to try and help increase their knowledge a little bit within chess and hopefully get a bit more enjoyment out of the games there's three games that we did play so we'll take you through each one of them so now we can bring through the queen with a check on the king still playing it safe and cagey I'm trying to find the better positions on the board we can all suffer with overconfidence you know just because we're playing a beginner you know we try and get fancy and arty i'm trying to keep it as real as possible so now we're attacking a higher piece which is the rook so if the king takes the knight we can take the rook and we're also on his bishop as well we do also have a diagonal for the queen taking the pawn and it would have a check on the king if the king didn't take the knight So the king takes the knight so we freely can take the rook nice position onto the bishop also onto the pawn so again the power of the pawns they're pushing the pawns taking the bishop seeing as he's not moved his bishop and protected the rook or anything like that so we can freely take there 
overworking the queen but currently there doesn't seem to be any major threats and now they decide to bring the bishop to defend the um, rook so we can freely take the pawn always being careful being steady looking for the better position all the time not trying to blow the opponent out of the water just looking at steady position all the way through Pawn manoeuvres again, which allows us to put a check on their king, attacking the pawn at the same time. Got a double attack with the knight attacking the pawn, putting a check on the king. So slowly but surely trying to um, shorten the span of movement for the king. the bishop takes so we can freely take back with the queen now and we're also on the rook at these stages um, obviously people would resign but we wanted to take it through see how far see how it can look how it can feel so we're grabbing pawns left right and center with the queen they're pushing the pawns through so at this stage of the game you would say well the game's all over now but it's really good to practice your end game stuff just because you've got all these pieces do you really know how to end the game you know you've got to question yourself all the time even when you're playing people of the same level as yourself do you really know how to end the game or are you just um, being satisfied with going for draws or going to a stage whereby yes the opponent capitulates but really they didn't need to capitulate and if they hadn't done would you have known how to end the game so practicing against the absolute beginner here allows myself to practice my end game movement it can be annoying and it can be a little case of well you know you're going to win so what you're playing on for these are the key things even in like the world championship games where the, per the opponents look like they potentially could lose but they continue on until it is set in stone that the game is fully over they continue on and they continue on and it's a good practice to get into because the opponent can make a mistake and it's for you to see the opportunity when they do make that mistake and to pounce on it so now we're opening up the white square bishop but really looking to push the pawns up through the center with the support of the rook so keeping everything as basic as possible keeping it as simple as possible and taking advantage of the advantages that we have in the game based on what the opponent um, would be looking to develop going forward is less concentration on the pawn pushing and now that they know how the pieces work then start working the pieces together in unison minor pieces getting the major pieces out working together and slowly but surely pushing the pawns up when needed so that's the key thing for this beginner game So we're just slowly but surely pushing the pawn up <clears throat> we could bring the rooks out but there's no point in over egging um, i want to practice my end game practice with this simplification of the pawn and we can capture the rook with a check mate almost And there we have it so that was the first game against the beginner and the tutorial was really quite interesting and the discussions that we had during and after um, were quite revealing so let's go on to the second game see how our opponent fared
Okay, here's the second game versus the absolute beginner. And as usual, pushing through with the pawns, a key thing for any absolute beginner, pushing the pawns through, um, believing that they're, you know, they're holding the fort and that the pawns are actually the kings of the game. And because this is their second game, obviously their, their habits are going to die hard. Misplacement of the rook there, again, bringing the rook into the center of the board. Um, it's easily identifiable as a major target for especially the bishops. So we took their rook off the board. So at this moment in time, because materially we've got the rook off the board, um, the gauge bars showing that we're out and out winning here. But as we've said before, we want to play a good solid game. It's not a matter of blowing the opponent out of the water, it's about finding the better positions. And as you can see, this is the second game that the absolute beginner has played. So these old habits that they've got of the pawn pushing, this is not going to change overnight. It's only their second game. So they've brought out the knight, which I thought really good. But I was pleased that they brought a minor piece out. So we targeted the knight. His other pieces are not yet being developed. It's one of the key things that I see for beginners. I'm not a teacher. It's just I do play um, quite a few beginners. And um, I like playing the beginners because um, I want to understand how it is that the lower rated players beat the higher rated players. So um, I constantly play the beginners as well. So we're targeting through the center. We're looking to try and improve our position, trying to take advantage of the opponent's lack of development of their pieces so we're giving them something to think about and they capture with the knight so we can freely capture back so now they've got no pieces developed but how do we get in how do we break through and still stay safe that's the key thing for me so we develop the knight so the majority of our pieces are developed need to get the queen moving link up the rooks that type of situation all the basic stuff should hold us true and yet another pawn move these old habits you know it'll take a while to change and um, we did discuss these um, during and after the games as well but like we said it's um, only their second game so we bring the queen through now target in the soft spot just at the side of the king And now we've linked up the rooks so we like to be true to our own concept development is key if you can link the rooks up if it's got that far then we'll try and work your pieces together as a team and yet another pawn move no minor pieces moved no major pieces moved so that's a little bit of a uh, an issue that as a beginner uh, if you play like this it's about just holding back on those pawn moves develop your pieces first get good positions get the team working together and then follow on with your attacks pressuring the king the king area okay so that pawn's been taken the pawn that has just taken now can actually be taken by the queen because it's putting a check on the king so in essence that is going to help us develop a little bit further up the board there is another pawn at the side which has got no protection on which allows our queen to potentially get a check on their king so again kind of suffocating the king a little bit because there's all these gaps so the danger with pushing the pawns is that they, they don't have any defense behind them so they can cap they can protect themselves for only one move after that but if you've got no pieces defending the minor pieces or the major pieces um as a basics then they're going to struggle to be maintaining any existence on the board so case in point here but we have to try and work our pieces together as best possible and it's not about being overconfident with our position we need to try and keep looking and finding never mind what the gauge bar is saying because we don't see the gauge bar during the game and we did say well we're going to continue on he wanted to see how it ended how the game ended no matter what so they've moved the king so now we can bring the bishop through and 
basically in a nutshell it's kind of like a checkmate so working the pieces together focusing more on developing the, your minor pieces and then developing your major pieces once you've developed your minor pieces then maybe push the odd pawn out here and there and just focus on then looking at weak areas around the opponent and then from there you can build up your attack process so that was part two of the absolute beginner teaching just gym so this is the last game that um, me and the absolute beginner played played for about 15 minutes for the first game and the second game so like we said they're just brand new to chess they understand how the pieces move so that's a, a good starting point for them um so they've done a bit of reading and i've given them a few little tips but not, nothing major um just throughout these games so their whole experience is of just reading a, a book and knowing what the pieces do and that's it so we've got to this stage here now in stage three where we're trying to look more at trying to get other pieces involved in the game not just the pawns like i said this is the first time this opponent has really played an opponent per se they're a beginner and initially the pawns were being pushed you know with no support but they were pushing the pawns uh, in the first two games so we're looking at in this particular game to see whether or not we could drive through uh, the smallest of progressions um chess is a long drawn out process um i'm still learning all the time and it's quite impressive the amount of concepts that you can bring into your own development so i'm hoping fingers crossed i've i've given our opponent some sorts of ideas as to how they can progress if they want to progress uh, still through the game i've learned a lot from them um in these particular games as well they've been teaching me quite a few things whether they like it or not and it's a confirmation of the fact that you know pushing the pawns through by themselves really doesn't help your game um you have to develop your pieces you have to work your pieces together and you have to have a plan of sorts or strategy to attack key pieces key spaces and really take advantage um of working your team together on the board really putting pressure on the king and the king area so that's what they retaught me um, in that understanding so we'll go through the game And we play as white okay so initially pushing the pawns again so we're, we're hopeful so we developed our bishop just nice and steadily and again they maintain the pushing the pawns like i say i mean it's going to be hard to break a habit and but I did quite like his pawn, pawn movement. It's just that it's the king side um, pawns. And really that weakens the area. So we capture through the centre here. We're eyeing up the gap that they've got in front of their king. Because there's no real defence there. And then now they've actually de they've developed the knight. Developed the queen. So I'm quite excited for that. Because they're actually using other pieces than the pawns now. So that's development in its own right looking forward obviously it's going to be the position on the board and not weakening your king area because as you can see there's a diagonal of white squares facing their king which is probably going to cause them a problem but for progression this is a lot different to the first game where all it was was pawns being maneuvered they've brought the knight through but it doesn't really have any support on what is it actually attacking so this is further development that they, they, they're going to take away from this um, session is the fact of you've got to support your pieces and work your pieces together. Single attacks really don't work. And you have to remember that you have pieces where you've placed them. And if they are being attacked, 
we castle king safety we go for all our basic stuff developing pieces keeping our king safe no matter who we're playing against beginner intermediate or advanced those are the basic things that we want to work on so the pawn's pushing down so reverted back to pushing the pawns again i was looking for a little bit more of minor pieces being developed either the overnight or the bishops so we bring our queen through now obviously looking to target this sort of weak area around the king looking for a discovered check on his queen if we can and the knight attacks the pawn but it doesn't have any support on it so um, I wondered if they thought the white squared bishop had the diagonal and it was protecting um, this knight so yeah again it's basically making sure that your pieces are supported then they've reverted back to pawn pushing again does look good but there's loads of space around their king area the other minor pieces haven't been developed into the game so we can push forward with a discover check on their queen and they actually capture the pawn so the queen doesn't have any support so we can capture the queen so in this particular game taking it one step further is if your pieces are out making sure that they're in appropriate positions safe and supported and they are working together with the rest of the team and develop the minor pieces and your major pieces more so than your pawns so the opponents reverted back to type again by pushing the pawns and late development of their pieces the king is stuck in the center of the board it's not being protected protection of the king, king is key because obviously the whole idea about the game is to get checkmate so if your king isn't safe it's more likely to get checkmated the rooks come down and it's not really a functional maneuver because we can look for developing our bishop but also x-raying through to the rook so if he doesn't move the rook the bishop will be able to take the, the rook off the board if we push the pawn up we're trying to take advantage of those white squares in front of the king so as an absolute beginner um it's once you know how the pieces move then it's looking at the strategy so the pawn bishops move down so we're looking for this discover check on the rook if the rook doesn't move then the bishop can take the rook which is a higher piece and it looks like it would be taken for free as well So the key thing again is around knowing what is actually happening on the board so he's moved the rook so the bishop can take the rook off the board here and developing a a system for yourself to say well if i am moving this piece what is in danger am i putting this piece in danger um can the opponent put a threat or an attack on a higher piece or are they creating like x-rays through to a piece what is actually happening behind the scenes of those moves and working your pieces together once you start working your pieces together and supporting your pieces then you start to understand a little bit more about what the pieces can actually do and where you can improve so we're not now attacking through the center looking to open up the king space pawn is actually on the bishop so the pawn can take the bishop if nothing gets taken if the pawn does take then it's opening up space around their king so i would say going forward which i did say going forward for um this player it's a matter of working your pieces together getting them gelled together when you're doing your opening so then at least then you can say well i've kept all of my pieces safe whilst i've developed my pieces so it's harder for the opponent to get in so the king's moved over now so there's a space for the queen to actually come and put a check on the king our white square bishops blocking that diagonal so that's looking quite nice 
so now we're looking to build up an attack towards the king which hopefully will give us a checkmate position because of all the space around the king because the king isn't safe we can now take this type of action and throughout the whole of the answer process like we said we can actually take this pawn because there's nothing protecting the pawn and we get a check on the king with the queen so always key is the piece protected am i safe can i actually pull off this move and then if you're looking to attack then is it appropriate to attack are you supported what's the next move that you can put in place before anything such as like trying to get a checkmate have i got enough pieces in there blocking off the king or is it just a single attack that can just be taken off the board so it's a lot for an absolute beginner to take in so we're sneaking around the back we can look to take the bishop off the board or we can get a checkmate with the queen bringing the queen around with the support from the bishop the rook is blocking the king off so that is the team working together quite nicely preventing the king from moving and then we get a checkmate so that's the end of the absolute beginner teaching gesture series absolute beginners have to go through the process of understanding how the pieces move once they understand that then it's about well okay what's the proper strategy that i want to develop um if i do push all my pawns down um am i supporting my pawns and you notice how i'm not saying pushing pawns is a bad thing it's a it's, it's bad if they're not supported yep i've seen some really brilliant games where people have pushed the pawns but the pawns have been supported at each stage by minor pieces by pawns themselves by major pieces and they've they've worked them quite nicely together but single attacks do not work so a single pawn movement with no support is definitely not going to work it leaves gaping holes in especially if your king isn't protected so yeah i've enjoyed this this series and uh, on to the next one